Fire, great job. It's amazing how keikis can inspire us, isn't it? Yes. Well, would you pray with me as we begin our sermon together? <clears throat> our God, we are your people called into this world by your voice to do the impossible, and that is to love others. And so today, would you come and attune our ears to you? May we be a people that rejoice in the spirit of Christmas, but most of all, knowing that you have met with us this day. For it's the name of Jesus, our Christ, that we pray. Amen. Have you ever been in sacred space? Space that you walk in and know is holy ground. For some, they walk into this space and say, this is sacred. For others, they go out on the ocean or up onto the mountains. For others, their home is their sacred space. But there's a sacred space that's beyond what we can see. It's of this other world experience of sacredness. And most people call this sacred space impossible. It's that world of impossible that we think is out there, that nothing can ever be done in that space. And yet history has proven us wrong over and over and over again. A few examples. A voyaging community that set out on double-hauled canoes, following stars to find distant lands. It seemed impossible, but it became possible. A call from a president that a man should walk on the moon. Impossible, people shouted. And now we know it is possible. A device that you would carry around in your pocket that you can talk to your family, whether they are down the street, on the mainland, or somewhere on this globe called a cell phone. Just maybe 30 years ago, that was impossible. Now, we all have them. It's possible. I remember hearing the story of my grandparents talk about when they had children and never getting to see the face or the body of their baby. And when I started having kids, we got to go get one of those ultrasounds in which we saw the 3D image of each child. But the third child we got a special treat, a 4D image of William. It was him staring right at us. I noticed his ears first. They looked like mine. Hooray! <laughs> and suddenly it was this face staring at us, not in abstract, but in a picture. And I promise you, he was smiling at me. You see, just maybe six years ago, that was impossible, but now it is possible. We live in this time and space in which we hear the word impossible quite often, and over and over again we find out that what seemingly is impossible is in fact possible. And for me, it's when we look at children that we realize the impossibility of possible, that you and I are able as humans to create the most beautiful things in the world, children. And so, in an impossible world, Mary is encountered by an angel. Just sit with that for a moment. Mary is encountered by an angel that has a word for her. Rejoice! Rejoice! And what does rejoice mean? Well, in Hebrew or in Greek, the actual word for rejoice, the root of it, is the same word that you and I use for joy. Joy is the responsiveness of our rejoicing. Joy is that which we feel inside that comes out of us. Joy is that moment that overwhelms our senses to the point that we just stand and go, wow, oh, can you believe this? This morning, 30,000 people at 5 o'clock saw fireworks. Why? Did anyone else get awakened by fireworks at 5 in the morning today? How many people thought that something bad was happening? Okay, maybe I'm just the only odd duck in the room. But you and I are invited into this world of impossibility in which possibilities become normative. And Mary is told an impossible story that you, Mary, 13 years old, you are going to bear a son. And this son isn't just the average son. No, this son is the son of 
God. Impossible, she says. In her words, how can that be? Whenever we're faced in this sacred space of impossible, our normative response is to ask questions like, how can this be? How how can this be possible when everything that is in front of me tells me it's not? And that, our friends, is where our faith is found. That you and I are invited into the world of the impossible and to believe and to trust that the impossible can just become possible. Mary, this young woman, probably had those that told her it's impossible, that that can't happen, because don't we all grow up in this world being told our dreams are impossible? That great parenting is when we, we fuel the, the dreams of our children and allow them the space to explore and to wonder, and who knows what they might actually do when we allow it. There's a great book that I read growing up called Where the Sidewalk Ends. Maybe you've heard of it. Shel Silverstein is the author, and he wrote this poem one time that I think is apropos. Listen to the mus- mustn'ts, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never-haves. Then listen close to me. Anything can happen, child. Anything can be. The story of Mary is a story of joy, of understanding that in the world of impossible, the possible can happen. And you and I are invited into that world every day of our lives to step into the world of the impossible and to dare to believe that it's possible. How do we know that that's true? I would imagine if we went through every person in here You could tell a story from your own life about an impossible situation in which you made it through and the impossible became possible. That's the wonder of talking story, isn't it? That when we share that which we've experienced in our own lives, it gives us hope and joy of what can be for each other. Now, it doesn't mean that every single thing is always going to come true. But if we don't have our foot in the realm of the impossible, then nothing is guaranteed to come true. And so you and I walk in faith into this world of the impossible. The angel says in verse 37, nothing is impossible with God. The first time that phrase is used is when this old woman named Sarah, who's married to an old man named Abraham, are told that they're going to have a child in their elderly age, and they laugh. And in their laughter, the angel appears and says, anything is possible with God. Yes, that is the world in which you and I dwell, a world marked by the possibilities if we trust and if we walk into the impossible. For this past month, through Advent, we've been reading poetry from Mary and Lyman Mercer. And this week, she had a conversation with her husband, a physicist, about the Big Bang, which erupted into this idea of what joy looks like in the cosmos. So I'd like you to hear her words as she describes joy from the way in which the world began into the smallness of a moment in time. From an infinitesimal singularity, comes a cauldron of formless chaos that enfolds and molds into matter. Out of nothing comes something that's thrust into the cosmos, traveling at the astounding speed throughout the expanding universe in intense radius, creates the all that there is, and in moments when presence is found in the nearness of now, This radiance seeks release in the world, and we find it in the clear, pure flute song of a shama thrush, in the brilliance of a double rainbow arching across a rain-swept sky, in the great white foam splash of a breaching whale. This light shines bright in stories shared with friends, The same glow grows soft as parents tenderly gaze 
at their newborn babe asleep on the hay. The vastness of this universe is realized in a child asleep on the hay. This Christmas may be the surprise of Christmas for you, be the surprise of joy, that the joy of the world is here, bound in a manger, sleeping on the hay. May it be so. Amen.